Welcome to Arm Pitching Development. This is Coach Jason, this is Coach Josh Matana. And amplify your mechanics and grow your pitching knowledge by hitting the subscribe button. Today's topic, we're covering pitch grips, right? So for me, pitch grips um, kind of work with your arm slot. And not all pitch grips are going to be relevant for all pitchers. You have uh, higher arm slots, you've got lower three quarter arm slots, you've got sidearm guys, you've got sub guys, right? You have all these different planes of motion that dudes are throwing out of. So not all pitches are gonna work for the same guy, right? Uh, what I throw as a pitch or what I threw as a pitcher, because I'm kind of getting up there and eight, but what I threw as a pitcher may not work for Coach Josh, right? My curveball grip was not the same as Coach Josh's grip. Um, and Coach Josh spending time in indie ball and uh, doing some things professionally. He's got a wealth of knowledge and we're going to learn some of his grips as well as some of mine. For me, guys, I was a lower three-quarter arm slot. I was probably right out here. I was a heavy two-seam pitcher, so a two-seam pitch for me was here hug the seams or I would go across seam. This one I seem to have just maybe a slightly bit more run on the pitch. Then I did this one. Again, I was a lower three-quarter arm slot right here, right? Uh, Josh, you got one? Uh, yeah, so for me, I was always a closer when I played uh, independent ball and uh, overseas a little bit. One thing that helped me out a lot, first thing, is spend time with other pitchers on your team when you guys are in the bullpen or at practice. Just playing with different grips, playing catch with each other, just seeing kind of what works and what feels natural to you. One thing that helped me a lot is just playing with my curveball in the bullpen a lot. So. One is finding a grip that feels comfortable to you, where you don't feel like you got to do too much. Two, where do you feel like you can get the ball out in the right way through your release point? For me, it ended up being just going across the top of the horseshoe, tucking my thumb underneath it, and just thinking when I get to my release point, I'm giving a thumbs up down to my catcher. Hey, let's show them that grip again real quick, Josh, because that's a pretty unique grip. So, right. horseshoe on the inside, you'll see a lot of guys go with it on the outside. For me, have it on the inside and my thumb underneath allowed me to get my hand rotated on top of it a little bit more. Part. Yeah, right there. So you see it here. That's a pretty unique grip, yeah. And that was your slider, right? Uh, curveball. Curveball. Curve yeah, so for me on a curveball, I had a couple of different ones. I would come with a kind of a knuckle curve here, and I felt like this was my tighter spin curveball. And I'd also have kind of a looping curveball, right, where I would come up with my uh, pointer finger would be up a little bit or slightly off the ball. And as I came out here, it would be a little bit slower break to it. I wasn't getting as much rotation on it. It would be kind of a, a loftier pitch for me. Uh, my tighter pitch was here. And that, that had, from this arm slot, it had a little more slider effect to it. It was more of a slurve, honestly, but um, it, was, it was my faster out pitch uh, in terms of, of curves go. Uh, also, I wanna say, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on around pitch design right now. And, using uh, fancy equipment, rap sodos, and different things to help with pitch design. And I think they're extremely valuable and extremely helpful. Um, in terms of old school, because a lot of guys don't have access to rap sodos yeah. out there today, uh, and, or fancy equipment, they're outlying areas, they just don't have access or money or time to get it. Pitch design in my world was about going out, feeling comfortable, like you yeah. said, and finding what grip worked and was successful with you. Playing with pitches. Yeah, you play with pitches through your catch, right? Mm -hmm. We would play catch all day long and find out, oh, look at this curve or look at this change up. And we would just design our own pitches. So you guys out there, don't get too hung up on these fancy terms, which they are relevant. Today's society, there's a lot of matrix and measurements out there, which is fantastic and it's helped the game tremendously, but don't feel handcuffed. If you guys don't have access to this stuff, guys were doing it well before the invention of uh, the internet and the computer and technology that, that we use today. Bob Feller was out there designing pitches on his own um, just by playing catch, I promise you, right? That's what worked. Um, what else you got on this, Coach? So another thing I had to start learning is a slider because my curveball was very much a 12-6, a little bit slower. I probably topped out 75 with it. So going from fastball curveball is basically sit on fastball, sit back on curveball. 
So one thing I started learning was something that had a little bit more different movement. So I switched to a slider and I took what was originally my cutter fastball and just moved my fingers over a little bit farther, moved my thumb up on the side of the ball and put my pressure on my middle finger and my thumb. So when my arm came through, that would lock and create a more sideways rotation on the ball coming down through my uh, release mm -hmm. point. One thing that I had to do a little bit differently was from my curveball release point pulling down through my catcher, my curve or my slider, I would have to get out to my release point and kind of come across on my catcher a little bit more to get a little bit more sideways mm -hmm. movement on it. Yeah, so and that's exactly right. And the way I kind of look at the sliders when I teach it to, uh, to guys that are up there in age or looking for an advanced pitch, um, I always try to talk about getting the thumb through the catcher as well on our release. So we're kind of driving through that pitch and then pulling through and getting extended through the release point on that. Uh, I don't know how much pressure you had. It looked like you had a ton of, you're kind of really gripping that pitch. Yeah, I was just doing that for effect more. Anyway. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's not like, I'm not trying to choke the ball. Yeah. It's just, that's where my pressure is. I'm, yeah. It's more, you're still holding like an egg. You just want to think emphasis on the middle finger and the thumb rather than the pointer. Gotcha. So this has a little bit of, of looseness to yeah. it as you go. And then you just kind of, uh, feel, yeah. Right. Gotcha. I'm basically just taking my cut fastball mm -hmm. and putting a little bit more on the side of it. Yeah. And like I said, I wasn't a heavy slider guy. So. Uh, might have played with it a little bit. I never got the feel for it. I didn't like it. Uh, but I'm going to talk about change-up grips, right? So for me, as a two-seam pitcher, I had a lot of run, a lot of depth on my pitch there with my two seams. Uh, I had a two-seam showcase change-up, uh, and I'll show you two grips because I actually threw a split finger as well. But uh, my change-up, what I did was kind of slightly come off with the two-seam here. And I don't know if you guys can see that here, but I see my palms open. So I just kind of laid in my fingers pretty nice and easy and then wrap my thumb down at the bottom so I kind of have a locking mechanism here to control that pitch. This one act as kind of a guide, these two did, and I would just kind of rest it here. And, it, and so, for better terms, that's what it looks like there. Nice little spacing in the palm. And so when I came off of my fastball here and I showed out my changeup, there wasn't much difference on that other than the spacing of my fingers. And guys really aren't gonna track that that well by the time I get through and release this. Now, one important thing on this pitch for me to add a little more depth to it was I really would pull down with my thumb here and on my release point, I would come down, shoot my thumb down and I would let this pitch roll off my fingertips here and it would get this nice inward spiral. So I got a nice down and in drop to right-handed pitchers and it had a nice fade down and away to left-handed hitters. Actually, um, I used the changeup or my changeup from a lower three-quarter arm slot here. Uh, that was my out pitch for lefties um, in, in, on the outside corner. Um, how about you, Coach? Uh, for me, I, I changed mine a lot. Uh, while I was playing baseball for, in college and independent for a while, I was a real split finger. So I hold it real across the seams here, thumb underneath, and just think laid on the release point because it would come out top of the fingers. Hmm became something that I had a hard time controlling, so I started switching to the circle change a little bit more. I don't really like the term because a lot of guys get here mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. It makes it real hard to stay through your release point with that. So basically, I would just take a two seam grip with my middle and ring finger instead of my middle and pointer. Just go thumb underneath, pinky on top, and like Coach Jason was saying, just kind of tell myself I'm trying to feel it come off the side of my fingers rather than the top of my fingers. Mm -hmm. And just think throwing a fastball, drop the thumb down at the end. Perfect, yeah. Uh, I also threw a split finger probably for, I don't know, three quarters of my career. I actually, I actually threw it all the way through. I used it at some level. Um, for me, I had a little bit uh, bigger pocket here to pitch from and I had spacing that came in. So I'm actually just holding that right in the middle of the horseshoe. Again, the thumb on the, uh, the second seam here would act as my lock. Um, what I had to remind myself, especially from this arm slot, was I really needed to extend and pull down on the pitch. So as I got out front, wrist back, and I really had to kind of push the pitch through with my thumb and then snap it down and through and pull through it. And what it did was act like a nice tumbling action on it and it would spike down through the pitch. Um, you covered yours. Uh, really, those three were my my core pitches and i don't know if you had any others that you used yeah, in your true, career true. yeah um there's a lot of different grips out there guys i invite you to go um shopping if you look over at the right hand side of here and you'll see all the different videos on pitch grips uh, as you're looking through this one 
check other people's stuff out, man, and find out what works for you is my biggest tip, right? Your pitch design. Find something that's comfortable for your arm, right? You have one career, you have one shot at this, make the most of it. Uh, don't, don't think that our way is your way. This is just the way we've been successful. And if it helps you, man, we've done our job here at Arm Pitching Development. And I, I hope you guys get that. Uh, anything else to add, Coach, before we wrap up? Or? Yeah, the one thing I would say to keep in mind when you're trying to develop another pitch is don't try to force anything. Mm. The biggest part is finding a grip that feels comfortable and then just trying to work off that. And a lot of times people have change, probably, a lot of times people have problems with the changeup because they try to force one way to hold it and just try to throw that. The hardest part or the easiest thing to do is get your grip that you feel comfortable throwing first and make small adjustments as you try to work through that pitch. Oh, great, good job tonight. Um, hey guys, so we invite you to hit the comments below what kind of pitches you guys throw, if you have any questions about pitch grips. Uh, if you want us to shoot a video on different topic or different pitch grips or something that we can educate ourselves on, we're more than happy to do that for you guys. Also help us out, hit the subscribe button on your way out, and we wish you the best. Have a good one.